welcome back to Immortal Empires and welcome back to 2023. Is it welcome back or welcome to? Probably welcome to. We're going to start off the year by chomping down on some dwarfs, having some good old fun today. But I hope everyone had a good new year and uh, we're straight back into making videos. Fun stuff is ahead on the channel this week and going into the future. So look out for that as well. But let's go ahead and start the episode here. Uh, we do have some upgrade for our Scar Veteran. That's a nice way to start. Uh, let's see, what can we get here? I think these guys are basically uh, fully maxed out at this point. We can get some extra speed. Uh, we'll get some speed for him as well. That's all looking good. And then we're going to go ahead and take Krokgar to Mount Arachnos. They do have a small Stop army here. Uh, that's not going to be too worrisome. And uh, they have two armies here, which is just two lords. Um, so I think the dwarves are pretty much uh, close yeah. to being extinct here. This is a close victory. Should we fight this one manually? Or we could auto-resolve it. I don't think there's any point wasting time doing a manual battle here. Let's go ahead and auto-resolve. And then we can get a bit more done in today's episode. If we have a bigger battle, then uh, we'll definitely be more inclined to fight it manually. But we gained 2,600 XP, 3,700 gold. That's looking good. We will go ahead and reoccupy this. And we do actually have the World's Edge Mountains under our full control now, which is nice. Lord Croak gaining a level up. Let's go ahead and see what we can give him. Uh, he has all of his magic and stuff. We could get another level in replenishment. So let's go ahead and do that. And then our Scar Veterans here, uh, they also have a level up. So let's go ahead... I think all we can give him now is leadership, so let's go ahead and do that. And then this guy's also level 28, so let's give him leadership. Uh, same for this guy. This guy's level 24. So we could probably... Uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and give him some weapon strength, and then we go ahead and give the melee attack. I think I've... Uh, uh, his leveling is a bit messed up, the order in which I've done it. And then this guy's level 20 now. Let's go ahead and give him some melee attack, and then we go into weapon strength, I think. I don't know. I don't think it really matters at this point. Right, so this army is recovering. We probably want to get rid of the Shredder of Lustria. When I say get rid, pull it into a slower army, because as you guys pointed out, it doesn't really fit because it's always lagging behind. And we might not also need this Bastilladon with a Revification Crystal. We don't take too much damage anyway, to be honest. Um, so we might replace that with something else as well. Maybe another Scar Veteran. Because, um, of course, that would give us another Carnosaur. And I'm going a bit crazy with the Scar Veterans at the moment. Let's go over to Ax uh, Uaxti. He's currently under siege from Belagar. So, we do have Pryjo over here. However, Pryjo is currently not within range. Right? Yeah, I don't think there's any way, unless we take Prigel up here. The FPS is really bad over here. Let's take Prigel to Martek, and then next turn I think we can bring him down and reinforce. Because if we march out here, I don't think we can win this. Um, let's see, that's quite an army. Do we have anything here that can give attrition? to enemies in our territory causes attrition to enemy armies within your territory so the right of soul tech has 6k ambush success chance plus 50 percent uh plus 10 melee attack for skink units they're nah, not so useful uh, this is all skink units and this is all skink units so i will go ahead and perform that just because if Belagard's army is also taking attrition damage at the end of every turn then the balance of power here should somewhat stay similar so it might just give us a few extra turns here, I think, um, for Prigel to come down. So that's all looking fine there. Well, it's not looking fine, but <laughs> we have a plan at least. Now, we do have a Beastmen army here of one unit. Is this just... They don't have any settlements. That's just one of the random beastmen spawned units. So let's go ahead and get rid of them. Um, I don't want them in my land. And they are raiding us as well. So let's go ahead and do that. They do try to run away. We can catch up though. And of course it's going to be an auto resolve. Executioner's Axe. Minus 5 melee attack. But we get Sundering attacks. And plus 20% weapon strength. Uh, that can be quite useful. Sends this equipping that for himself. We have killed the enemy in battle there, so that's all looking nice. Now, what do we want to do with Senzis? Probably go up towards Scarbrand. Ah, Morgurt is down here. I probably want to go down towards Morgurt as well. Ah, Tic-Tac-Toe, I need your help. Can I select a war target? Um, attack target, Scarbrand. Nope. 
right click, left click. Is it not going to work? What if I press defend target and I click on here? Okay, we can defend target. Um, so hopefully the tic-tac-toe comes up here to help us there. Um, because we don't really have anyone nearby to help. Uh, Sildare is over here with his mega army. We're going to bring him around this way. I don't think we get any penalties here. I think we have open borders, right? Yeah, we do. We have military access. So that's fine. So this army can come around here. And then maybe we can go for a counterattack on Scarbrand. Uh, I do want to deal with Scarbrand. 100%. Uh, let's see. Can we do any building? I think these provinces over here, or these settlements, are all okay and somewhat fully upgraded. Um, what about in the desert? Maybe I don't want to upgrade anything here right now. I mean, we could upgrade Numus. Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade the defense in Numus. Uh, that's fine. We can go ahead and upgrade the growth as well. And then what I'm going to build in here... We could build more income. Is that a bit excessive? Ah, let's do it. Let's build some more income. Why not? Uh, I do love a, a good bill of gold. And then if we go over to Lustre, we might be able to start building over here. Yeah, like um, over here in the Awakening. Let's go ahead and get this up to tier 3. We have the spare gold. We can go ahead and upgrade our resource as well. Oh. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can also upgrade the growth here. Um, that's all of our gold spent. And let's go ahead and put this province over here. Where is it? There we go. Let's go ahead and put this on growth as well. Let's check our diplomacy. See if there's anything interesting happening here. I don't think so. We get military access with Katep, but he's uh, quite a way away anyway. We're not getting any closer on the Confederation either. We might have to bribe them with some gold. Um, we are earning a bit of gold. But let's go ahead to turn 124. So Scarbrand is attacking Kemri. I don't think we can win this. Um, it's just mostly skink units. So I will go ahead and auto resolve this. The good thing is though Scarbrand's army is weak. So if we wanted to we could counter attack. And of course he is going to occupy Kemri. Uh, a minor setback there. Imric would like a non-aggression pact. Now where Imric is over here somewhere. You at war with the dwarfs, uh, the Skaven and the Greenskins. Uh, he's already got trade agreements with Last Defenders. Oh that's us, okay. <laughs> um, do you know what? I will go ahead and get that non-aggression pact with Imric here. Oh dear. Um, Zandri is also coming under attack. I didn't see this army here. Um, Sartosa, or the pirates of Sartosa attacking us. We don't really have a defense, so we're going to have to auto-resolve that one. Uh, we can take it back. I think this is around Prigel's area. Yeah, uh, just east of where Belagar is sieging us. Okay. Um, <laughs> Belagar <laughs> decided to nope right out of that siege and go and attack Prigel. And it's not even close here. Not even close. Well, it's, we really need Krokgar to come and deal with Scarbrand and Belagar ASAP. Um, I'm going to auto-resolve that one because I don't think I have a chance. Um, we'll come back and fight back against Belagar. These lands aren't super important because tic tac Toe can also take these back as well. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Okay, this is a battle we can definitely win, though. Let's go ahead and auto-resolve that. Uh, if we auto-resolve that, we do lose the Shredder of Lustria, which I'm not happy about. So, we're going to have to go in and fight this one manually. So, let's hop straight in and we'll do a little live battle. So, here we go then. This should not be too difficult at all. In fact, I think we're just going to send in uh, this guy. Let's take all of these which have kind of okay health. And I think everyone else can stay back. We'll also take in Lord Croak, actually. Uh, let's see. We could probably take in a few of these Carnosaurs as well. Now, all of these guys are quite damaged. So, let's just go ahead and stick them over here. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and take Krokgar. Uh, let's take our Scar Veterans. And we're also going to take Lord Croak and these guys. And do something like this. It shouldn't be too difficult of a battle. 
um, especially with Croc Gar here. Uh, I imagine he can take out one of these, uh, surely. Where are the dwarfs? They must be in the forest somewhere. What's this? Reinforcements coming in 1 minute 40. So there's only currently one lord um, here. I'll tell you what, can you just check over there? Just in case he has uh, somehow managed to hide himself in those trees. That would be wonderful. I'm not actually quite sure where he is. Ah, okay, there he is. Right. So let's go ahead and attack in there. What I'm going to do is just throw down a ward save down here as well. And that should be all good and dandy. Let's go ahead and pop some of this. That should be all good. This doesn't have anything. Uh, Lord Croak is slowly making his way here. It's going to be a while. What's his health looking like? Okay, his health is uh, looking very low. We could end the battle, but I think we're actually going to await reinforcements. Just so we can actually kill them both. And uh, Thoric is basically done for. Can we kill him before he gets taken off the map? Not quite sure here. I hope so. He is trying to retreat, but there we go. So we've managed to kill him. Um, Lord Croak throwing down his buff there. A bit too late. Let's go ahead and hide him in the trees. Should be fine. We've still got 30 seconds. So let's go ahead and speed up time a bit. And it shouldn't be too difficult here. Maybe we should move back a bit actually so he can not be right up against the border, but I'm not too sure. There he is. Let's go and get him, boys. Right. Let's do this. Now uh, we can probably do this. Let's see. We've got some effects to activate there. And then we just fast forward it. There's not too much happening here. That is a victory. Um, but I really want to kill him. So we're going to carry on just for a little bit to see if we can get that kill. Luckily, he's running this way. Um, so that's useful. There you go, he's getting tossed around a little bit. Come on, guys, get a kill, you dinosaurs. Use your teeth. Should be fine. His health is very low. I can't click on him, he's moving around too fast. He's got 1000 HP. Come on, guys. This should be quite easy to finish him off. You know, what I think is happening here is there's just too many people. So if we tell them all to back off a bit. Wait, did we kill him? No, he's right there. There we go. And then we just send in Krokgar. You should be able to get him in one bite. There we go. That's how you get a decisive victory. There we have it then. Decisive victory. I think it was always going to be the case. And we do manage to save our Shredder of Lustria there as well. No idea why the auto resolved would kill off that. As well as uh, our Bastilladon, but <laughs> that's the way it goes sometimes. Let's jump straight back to the campaign map. There we go, so 1000 XP, 2900 gold. That's all looking good. Ah, Morga has decided to attack Antok, but we have a Pyrrhic victory, so of course we're going to auto resolve that. And uh, Morga, or the Warherd of the Shadow Gave, should now be wiped out from the map. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and get the 120 gold. Uh, we'll try not to spend it all at once. And what's this? War coordination target has been lost. Ah, I see. So Tic-Tac-Toe can no longer defend Kemri, so that's not going to go through. Um, ah, that is annoying. Scarbrand. Scarbrand, we really need to do a Scarbrand, but we also need to do a Sartosa and Belagar. It's Belagar's actually taking quite a few settlements over here already. Hopefully Tic-Tac-Toe also sees the threat here and decides to go help us with that. We also lost Martek. Uh, okay, Martek is what Belagar took. And Ally loses Outpost because of that. But they're building a new one, so that's all good. And Karak Azul have been obliterated. There's nothing left apart from the echoing laughter of Thirsting God. So someone managing to wipe out those dwarves. And we also managed to destroy the Iron Browse Expedition. And we have, in fact, uh, obliterated them. So they're gone. And look at this. The dwarves are on a little extinction spree here. Karak Zifflin has also been destroyed. And then, of course, Warherd of the Shadow Gave is down. <laughs> and the dwarves just keep on dying. Barakvar have been obliterated. You love to see it. Um, Zandri, the correct land, has been sacked. Who sacked Zandri? Okay, so the pirates didn't take Zandri. They just sacked it. So that's good. Um, Prigel gaining a spell shield there. Plus 5 melee defense and 12% spell resistance. But he is wounded, so he's going to be out 
for a few turns here. Let's see. Uh, a lot of pop-ups. Uh, if we can recruit a lord, we get plus 1,000 gold and raise the banners. Minus 15% recruitment cost and plus 1 recruitment rank. Uh, that's all looking good for four turns. Uh, we could get a few dinosaurs in that time frame, couldn't we? Let's see. But let's go over to Krokgar first. I always like starting off the turn with Krokgar. He's, uh... I don't know. He's just something about him. It's magnificent. Right, let's go ahead and upgrade our Scar Veteran anyway. Um, let's see. We can go ahead and get some weapon strength. So let's do that. It's a shame we can't just skip over this rock formation and get to Scarbrand. Because if I go this way, then I risk Scarbrand running through all of my land. So I think we got to force march our way all the way down here. Uh, all the way down here. So we can stop Scarbrand if he starts coming through these lands. So that's fine. We also have some more level ups that I didn't see on our Scar Veterans here. Let's see, what can we get for you? We've already got this. Let's go ahead and give you some leadership. That's fine, we'll give you some leadership as well. That's all looking good, fine and dandy. Because if we go over here, we've already got an army going this way to counter-attack Scarbrand. So we don't need two going that way. Let's see, Uaxti is over here. Praying to have a chance against Belagar, whose army still isn't very damaged, is it? Belagar's army, uh, Uaxti's army doesn't really have anything magnificent either, does it? We could go ahead and take out these pirates, well. And there is a Scarbrand army here. If we take out the pirates, we could launch a counter-attack into Scarbrand territory. Decisive victory there. Let's go ahead and auto-resolve that one. Uh, armor of fortune, plus 5 armor, 5% physical resistance, and 5% ward save. Nearly 4,000 XP there, and 3,000 gold. Very nice. Uh, let's go ahead and take the replenishment. As I feel like we're going to need it. And then Uraxti gaining a level up as well. What do you want? Uh, we could give you mentor. We could carry on going down this tree. Let's go ahead... I'm going to go ahead and get another skill in Beast Driver, I think. And then, can we attack this army? Okay, they're going to be out of range. We'll try and chase them. Maybe we can get them next turn. And then, Uaxi here could launch a counter-attack whilst Scarbrand is occupied down here. Because whilst Belagar might take these lands, this is the heart of our land. And I don't mind losing a tiny bit of ground to Belagar if we can knock back Scarbrand. Because Tic-Tac-Toe can always help us recapture these. In fact... Do I have... How many alliance... I only have 8 alliance points. So I can't tell him to attack a target yet. But next turn, I think we can. So that's the plan there. We do have Senzis over here. Senzis no longer has to defend this. So let's go ahead and take him to the Springs of Eternal Life. Um, can he take on that army? I'm not actually quite sure. A lot of dinosaurs in this army. I think maybe we have in camp, right? No, we don't have enough movement to go to in camp. So let's just wait here until we have a reinforced on the army. Just to be absolutely sure we don't lose it here. Let's go ahead and carry on going for the counter for Sildet. And then we've got Zumbata over here. What is this army? No idea. Let's go ahead. In fact, you are Saurus Old Blood. Okay, I was mixing the trees up. I was so blind then. All right. Um, let's go ahead and give you Saurus units. Yes, uh, you do have. Wait, you're not using Saurus units though. Okay, that was silly of me. Let's go ahead and recruit some more dinos here. Let's see, we have Stegodons, or we could get some Bastillodons with solar engines. We already have two of those. Stegodons are nice, but I would like ancient Stegodons, maybe. Let's see, let's go ahead and get some more solar engines. I haven't played around with those yet, so it'll be interesting to see what they're like. And everything is looking good here. Now, do I want to go ahead and start... I see. Gorok has the most territory here, so we could go ahead and start sending him bribes. Or gold. Because what I really want 
is to get um, Confederation, which just isn't going to work right now. So what happens if I go ahead and just give him gold? Uh, I can give him a generous gift. Let's see. The selected faction's opinion of the deal. It is value is positive. Um, how much reputation will he gain for me there? Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and give him this. And then if we look over here, does it have it with the positives? They approve gifts given to its uh, 30. But we also gave... Can it go higher than this? Okay, we're doing a little experiment now. I'm going to give him some more gold. Because we're making plenty. Can we get it to go higher than 30? Or is there some kind of a soft cap to this? Uh, 90. Okay, so this is going up. I'm going to go ahead and give you some more gold then. <laughs> I'm just going to keep gifting him gold. In hopes we can get that confederation. So he's got plus... 100 relate, uh, opinion of us now because we've given gifts. So that's all looking good. And then if we can get that confederation, that goes a long way to gaining us a long victory condition here. But I think that's it for this turn. Let's go ahead and check out diplomacy. Uh, there's nothing in here really, is there? We could get military excess with Mazda Mundi. So let's go ahead and do that. That's all looking fine and dandy. We can... Yeah, nothing else here, is there? And we'll see how much closer we are to confederating Gorok next turn. But let's go ahead to turn 125. Oh dear, Belegar is carrying on his expansion. Uh, Tic-tac-toe, please. <laughs> Launch a counter-attack. We will auto-resolve that one, of course. Uh, we stand no chance there. Durfu would like a non-aggression pact for 1,000 gold. Uh, who are you at war with? And in fact, you're at war with people I don't really like as well. In fact, I think I will go ahead and accept that, actually. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that free 1,000 gold, and maybe we can give it to Gorok. There we go. Right of Primeval Glory performed. We did lose Koffer over here, Belagar, expanding his territory into the desert, which is a... Really not fun for us, but let's go back over to Krokka. Uh, we're going to start heading him over here. Scarbrand is still hanging out in Kemri. Is he recruiting? Uh, he is, because that's bigger than earlier. Um, we do have a level up for a Scar veteran, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. Go ahead and give him some more speed. I think that should be absolutely fine. And if we go ahead and force march this way, that should be good as well. Hopefully, Krokgar can link up with Census, and then we can take out Scarbrand. That would be beautiful. And then we could definitely launch a counterattack into his lands. Uh, let's go over to Uraxki, because he's currently trying to do something different. We have an army here we could take out. Oh, this terrain does not look nice, does it? Let's go ahead and take out this army. Okay, we can't actually reach them this turn. Uh, maybe we just sail this way and maybe we can reach Stormhenge next turn. That would be a nice way to launch uh, a counter-attack. Uh, we have Silda as well. He's still trying to march around the north, so let's send him out this way. And I don't think... Do we have anyone else? Senzis. Senzis is already... Um, let's go ahead and put him out here. We could ambush... Or well, I might just go into in-camp. We could take this out, right? Armor piercing. Flaming attacks. Anti-infantry. Armor piercing, anti-infantry. I think we could win. Scarbrand is the scary one, though. I think we're just going to wait for um, for Krukgar to come over. Because at least then I'll, I'll have a little bit of more confidence trying to take on Scarbrand. Now, here's the big moment of truth. Let's go ahead and check our diplomacy with Itza. Relations are going high. Uh, 
We've already lost five relations, though, for gifts. How close are we to... We've lost progress to Confederation. How does that work out? I'm very confused right now. We can get a military alliance with uh, Kalida. Let's actually go ahead and do that. Another 1.3k. There we go. Uh, it's nice to have a strong ally on one of our borders. But as for Confederation, I think that's gotten a lot worse. There's no kind of gold we can offer him either. Um, I don't want to threaten him. Let's see. Um, no, we need to get off of quick deal. There we go. So let's go ahead and initiate diplomacy. I can give him more gifts. Let's see, how much gold do I have? 16,000. What if I just give him... We could just give him a generous gift. There we go. And what's that done for this? Um, so 100 and... No, that's treaties. Ah, 135 for gifts now. Do we just have to keep giving him gold every turn until he accepts? Maybe. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Um, let's not go ahead and build anything now because we're going to need that gold if that's the case. Because if we look at our long victory condition... Uh, long victory condition. We need to control all provinces of Lustria, either by direct ownership or through vassals and military allies. Oh, military alliance. We're already military allies then, right? We are. So does this all count? Let's see. The Lost Valley is here. Do we have the Lost Valley clip uh, ticked off? I don't even see the Lost Valley. Uh, ch 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 let's see. All provinces of Lustria. The Lost Valley isn't even listed. Headhunter's Jungle we have because we control it. Ah, the Lost Valley. Oh, we do already control it. So we don't need to be bribing Korok. Oh dear. We should in fact be bribing... Because this is also part of Lustria. Uh, we should probably be bribing Mazda Mundi. Because he's at the lowest relations right now. And then we should be bribing these guys. And eventually these guys. We have a defensive alliance. And then we're going to have to wipe out the elves. Just because. Unless we can get a military alliance with the elves as well. Ah. Suddenly it doesn't seem as difficult. I thought we had to confederate. But it's just military allies. Okay. Now we've been enlightened to that. I think we can, if we just spend a few turns giving gifts, I'm sure we can get those uh, military alliances. In fact, how far away are we? We don't have a military alliance with the Southern Sentinels uh, or Hexiotl, the Ghosts of... We don't need that one there. Um, Hexiotl, sorry. And the Cult of Sotek here. Uh, yeah, that word. Right, so we go to military alliance. 7.6, 12.6, 16.9. So we're going to have to start working on um, Mazda Mundi here. Because for some reason our relations did tank with them. And they don't like Dakota Soltek. Okay, that's annoying. But yeah, right, let's go ahead to turn 126. And now we know that we just need military alliances. So that's good news. Okay, my ally has declared war. I hate how this never has a sound on pop-up. Sometimes I miss it. So Gorok is declaring war. On Ikit Claw, so we're gonna have to enter the war on the side of the ally, and hopefully Ikit doesn't turn up in our territory here, which I think he might because he's much closer to us than Gorok, I'm pretty sure. Well, Zag wanting a non-aggression pact. He is at war with any everyone, and he has absolutely no friends, so uh, we're going to say no to that because he is at war with the Empire and the Wood Elves, and I would like to be on their side rather than his. There we go. Rote of Awakening performed by multiple of our allies there. And that's actually about it on the end turn. But if we go ahead and zoom out, I think the world is doing okay. We've lost some territory here to Belagar. Um, but I think Tic Tac Toe is about to fight back. And Scarbrand is here. But as you can see, we have two armies here and even Tic Tac Toe. Um, himself there 
possibly launch an attack on Scarbrand soon. So we're going to be able to be able to beat him back. And I imagine we'll actually take pretty much all of his territory. Uh, it's a bit scary because it moves us closer to some more dwarfs. But I'm sure we can also deal with them as well. As a whole though, the lizard men looking very strong. They control all of this. Which is impressive. And then if you factor in all of this territory as well. Um, the lizard men are actually quite a powerful force right now. And of course we also have Kalida who's now a military ally as well. So I think we're in a good position. We lost probably about 30,000 gold today. But other than that <laughs> we're doing okay. But I hope you all had a good New Year's Eve. Uh, thank you for watching. I will be back tomorrow with maybe two videos. I'll let you see what's happening there. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.